You are listening to the Ingenious Podcast, where God's word is shared to build undisputed champions and mighty redeemers. This message is brought to you by the Ingenious Network. Enjoy the message. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We ask that bless today's session. Give us understanding. Give us insight to what we are learning today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So we've been considering the work of ministry. We've looked at the fact that the work of ministry begins first by knowing Jesus. Then after knowing Jesus, we learn how to minister to Jesus. We come to knowing the mysteries, becoming stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom. So the work of ministry starts with knowing knowing Jesus, ministering to Jesus, becoming a steward of mysteries. And under steward of mysteries, we look at the general areas where that God expects us to become stewards in about six or seven areas, which includes places like we should be uh, stewards of um, evangelism, (coughs) salvation, Um, the, the, the mysteries covers topics on salvation, the church, resurrection, sin, Redemption, um, the Godhead. So let me take it again. The work of ministry begins, the starting point is knowing Jesus, ministering to Jesus, becoming a steward of mysteries. And under steward of mysteries, the first part and the look, being steward, we looked at gaining the knowledge that concerns the mysteries of the Godhead, the mysteries of the domain of God, that is the kingdom, the mysteries that concern redemption and salvation, the mysteries that concern sin, the mysteries that concern the age to come, the mysteries that concerns the church. So these are the seven mysteries, uh, sort of about seven. If you break it down, it's more than seven, the way I've mentioned it. But technically about seven areas that we should know concerning the mysteries of God. But you have to understand that the, the greatest mystery of God is Jesus Christ. Now, the second part of being a steward of the mysteries, we, we looked at being able to look into the timeline of God and looking into the heavenly vision. That is literally becoming a steward of the mystery called time. And when we master this mystery, we are able to, especially if you're able to master the mystery concerning time, according to Isaiah 45, you and I will be able to command God concerning what he should do we will be able to command god concerning what he should do and to me i think this is one of the greatest privileges you and i can ever have today we are looking at the necessity of discipline and systems now we've come to a point in this work of ministry where we under, we've had our focus. We know what we are doing. We've set ourselves on a path. What should happen? It is now our duty, especially if we are truly going to journey upwards, to learn to be disciplined. And the ability to be disciplined is going to come out of our ability to set systems in place. So today we are going to read the Bible. Those who have not read the Bible for a while, they're going to read the Bible today. So, but I'm, we are just going to read two chapters. We are going to read everything, two chapters. 
The first place we are reading is First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. I'm going to start from verse 1 because we are going to read everything. So please do listen. If your Bible is with you, um, please read along. Do take notes. It's very important. Um, and comment so that we know that you are listening. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidden to marry, and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, now I want you to take note of verse 6. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed, but reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself toward godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So take notice of verse 6, take notice of verse 12. Till I come, Give attention to reading <laughs> till I come. Give attention to reading. I'm stressing it intentionally. Then he says to exhortation and to doctrine. Now verse 14 says that do not neglect, do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things, give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Verse 15, take note of that. Verse six, verse 15, and hey, verse six, verse 12, verse 15. Verse 16 says that, Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Please, did we hear this message? Are we reading? Are we listening? Okay, so I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Then after that, we will get into that discussion. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will keep up for themselves teachers. They will turn to their they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, and deal afflictions, 
do the work of an evangelist fulfill your ministry for i am ready be, for i am already being poured out as a drink offering in the time of my departure is at hand i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness where the lord the righteous judge will give to me on that day and not only me but also to all who have loved his appearing be diligent to come to me quickly for demons has forsaken me having loved this present world and has dis- departed for Thessalonica. Thessalonica. Um, Christians for Galatia, Titus for Dalmatia. Holy Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. And Tychicus, I have sent to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I left with Capus at Troas when you come. The books and the books, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him accordingly or according to his works. You also beware of him, for he has he has greatly resisted our words. At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the Lord would deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and evermore. Amen. Greek Prisca and Aquila in the household of Onesiphorus Erastus stayed in Corinth, but Trophimus I have left at Miletus' sake. Do your utmost to come before winter. Then it ends by saying, The Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. Now, we are talking about the necessity of discipline and systems. Now we are going to start our discussion from 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Now, before I touch it, I just want to give how a brief definition of what being disciplined is and also what a system is. These are my own definitions based on how I have understood it over time. Now, I I explain discipline to mean devotion and commitment to the calling of god on your life that is what discipline is it involves devotion and commitment to the calling of god on your life it also implies living a regimented life technically living a very predictable life with passion so Discipline is about devotion and commitment to the calling of God on your life. It is about living a predictable life with passion concerning particular things in your life. So we can read in Daniel chapter 6 that they said that when they looked for a law to entrap Daniel, they knew that the only way was going to be something that violated the law of his God. And it was going to be in the area of prayer because they realized that Daniel prayed three times a day. So they knew that if they made any law concerning prayer, they were going to trap him. And they were right. So sometimes it's good for the devil to be right about you. Your life must be predictable. It talks about the discipline. Now, when it comes to systems, systems literally, it's like a computer, computer system, right? So we are dealing with different components working together to achieve a particular result. So in our old computers, we used to have something called the system unit or the CPU and the monitor. So 
the CPU and the monitor work together to ensure that we are able to use the system. Then we have software that runs on the hardware to enable us interface with the computer or interact with the computer. So a system deals with different components working together to achieve a set result. Or we can also think of it as various components working in their respective areas or respective um, domains, contributing their allocated quota to accomplish a vision or a target. A typical example is our body, right? So we have our eyes, we have our hands, we have our feet, we have the intestines, we have the liver, we have the kidney, we have the eardrum, we have all those things. Everyone contributes its quota to accomplish a particular vision. That vision is called a healthy body, a functioning body, a whole body. So that's what a system is. Now, under systems, we can talk about the mindset of the believer. We can talk about the belief system of the believer. We can talk about the perspective or the approach to life of the believer. That is under system. Under system also, we are going to talk about prayer, that is the various component that is supposed to form our system. It's going to comprise of prayer, the studying of the word, fasting, giving, evangelism, and other things that we are going to talk about from First Corinthians chapter 4. So let's delve into First Corinthians chapter 4. It says that the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time, some will depart from the faith. So remember, we are called to journey upwards. We are called to live an uncommon life. And remember, we've already explained that the uncommon life is the sanctified life, the separated life, the consecrated life. It speaks of the holy life, holy living. We've come to understand that holiness is not something that we do. It's a gift from God. We receive holiness by the declaration or the decree of God by God appearing in a space or inhabiting a space and God anointing a person or a thing. That's how things become holy. The opposite of something that is not holy is that it is profane. It is profane. So in the latter days, that is in these times that you and I find ourselves, we are going to find a lot of people that will run away from being Christians. That is because the Bible says that they will give in to the doctrines of demons and they will also allow themselves to be deceived. So it means that the reason why you and I need to be disciplined in our journey upwards, need to be disciplined as we have embraced the uncommon life, is so that this will not happen to us that one, we will not be deceived, that two, we will not be enticed by the doctrine of demons, that we'll be able to tell the difference what is from God, what is not from God. So our discipline is for our benefit, is to make sure that we don't lose our reward, is to make sure that we don't change our confession. Now, how are we going to achieve this? The Bible says that we are going to achieve this when we start reading from verse 5. He said that prayer, the word of God and prayer. So it means that for you and I in the journey upwards, in the, uncommon, the embracing of the un uncommon life, the first place of discipline must be in the word of God, in the study of the word of God, and in prayer. Remember what the apostles said in the book of Acts when they were talking and complaining about food. He said that appoint men that are filled with the spirit to come and do this business of sharing the food. But as for us, that is as for us, the 12, the apostles, we are going to give ourselves to prayer and the word. 
to prayer and the word. So we have to get discipline in prayer and the word. Because remember, the word is the basis of our belief. The word is the reason why we are here. The word is the reason for our confession. The word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So we want to interact with God who is invincible. The starting point is the word that reveals this God. And we have to be disciplined in knowing this God by giving attention. Listen, some people have been, they've been Christians for about five years now, six years now. But I can guarantee that some, many people have not even finished reading the, the New Testament from Matthew to Revelation. They haven't. And I'm picking the New Testament because it's the lesser of the two. Because when we talk about the Old Testament, yeah, that one day, some people cry they've never read Leviticus before. <laughs> they've never read the, they've never read numbers before. Do you know why? Because we are not interested. We think that there's nothing for us to learn in this place. When we are reading the genealogies, when we are reading the the, 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 the Judah is 12,000, this. You have to be disciplined because if God is going to reveal himself to you and I, it, it is going to start from the word. Now, remember, we've talked about prayer before and we said that prayer Prayer is an instigator. Prayer is a trigger. And what prayer triggers is that prayer triggers revelation. Prayer triggers, um, yeah, let me just leave that one. Prayer triggers revelation. When you pray, you receive revelation. Then the second thing is that when you pray, you will receive empowerment. So if you are going to journey upwards, you need power to journey upwards. You need revelation to journey upwards. You need revelation to embrace the uncommon life. You need power to live the uncommon life. And that is why we need to build ourselves to the point that we are always reading our Bible and we are always praying. I always say this. You see, when you listen to someone like me and s some of these new pastors that have come up, you are going to see that we are going to talk about the Hebrew, the Greek. But you realize that most of us, what we don't do is that we don't read our Bible every day. We, some people only read their Bibles when they are going to teach or preach. And they will go and look for Hebrew and Greek and come and say big, big things. And we get excited and say, that, wow, they are deep. But look at your mother, your father, who is a Christian, who wakes up every morning at 4 a.m., at 5 a.m., and the first thing that they do is they do their Bible studies. They do their quiet time. They spend time with God. They've been doing it for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and they are still doing it. They are not tired. But many of us, the young people, we don't pay rent. We don't pay light bills. We don't pay water bill. All we do is appear and say that, Mommy, Daddy, I'm hungry. And yet we cannot read our Bible every day. We don't pay school fees too. We can't read our Bible every day. We can't pray every day. How are we going to get discipline to read our Bible and to pray? Move away from the television. Move away from the computer. Move away from the phone. How many of us have a physical Bible? Can you raise your hand if you have a physical Bible? Can you raise your hand if you have a physical Bible? How many of us are proud to carry our physical Bibles to church? Many people are ashamed to carry their physical Bibles to church. 
when we were growing up in SC, we kept singing, read your Bible, pray every day. If you want to grow, if you want to live this uncommon life, if you want to journey upwards, you have to read your Bible. And when I say read your Bible, I know that we have these devotionals that, you know, make you read a memory verse here and there. Me, I'm not a fan of the memory verse um, kind of devotional. I want you to pick a book and say that I'm starting from this book. I'll move to this book. I'm starting from chapter one. I'm from chapter one. I'm going to read chapter two. And you, you go there with your notebook. I'm not talking about rushing through your Bible. Some people, you, you read your Bible every day, but you read it for just five minutes. Your devotional is five minutes. So you read uh, today's uh, lesson is within 10 minutes, you are done. You won't think through what you have read. All you know is that I have read, I have prayed the prayer that they said I should pray. I'm done for the day. We are gone. We need to be disciplined. Can you count the number of times you open WhatsApp, Instagram, a day, Facebook on your phone? But you have a Bible app. Have you ever wondered why you never, your fingers never gravitate to your Bible? That, oh, let me quickly see if I can memorize a, a memory verse. Let me see if I can quickly memorize a memory verse. Let me see if I can quickly memorize a memory verse. I remember when I was in school, one of my teachers got so angry because I said I was a Christian. And the first thing he did was that he took me to the staff room and he said, I should give 10 memory verses. <laughs> you can imagine. If we ask you for 10 memory verses right now, and they tell you that John 3.16 is not part, John 10.30 is not part, John 1.1 1, 1 is not part. Hey, what memory verse? John John 11.30, is it John 11.35 is not part? Which memory verse will you quote? Psalm 23 is not part. Psalm 1 is not part. Wh which memory verse will you quote? So you see, this is why we have to be committed to being disciplined. The Bible says that if we instruct the brethren in these things, we will become good ministers of God. The reason why we are reading the Bible is to know what the Bible calls doctrine. Doctrine. You have to know doctrine. If you don't know doctrine, you cannot defend Jesus Christ against any other religion. Trust me, you can't. The Muslim will take you apart. The Buddhist will take you apart. The atheist will take you apart. They will take your own Bible and after they are done with you, you will not believe in your own Bible. So please, let us be devoted. Now, it says in verse 7 that reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself toward godliness. Exercise yourself towards godliness. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Another version will say, train yourself. The word there is gemazo. This is the word we get gem from. To train yourself to do gymnastics. Please, are we not all human beings? Are we all as flexible as those who do gymnastics? <laughs> Even when you bend down at this age, you can't get up without help. But how are they able to do gymnastics? They train themselves. They train this bone that you and I have. They train their own to become flexible. You, our own. If it bends the way their own bends, we will hear a pop. It will break. But they, through training, they are able to teach their body 
to bend. So he says that we should reject the profane. Now we've already talked about the profane. Now remember, the profane is the common life. It's the life of the ordinary human being. A life of a person without Christ. That is the profane. But we are supposed to train as gymnasts or gymnasts to, to, to be seen as godly. We are to exercise ourselves toward godliness. Toward godliness. So it means that the next discipline, apart from the word and prayer, is the discipline to achieve godliness. Godliness. And it's going to take, you see, the discipline to attain godliness is a discipline of the mind. It's a discipline that comes out of understanding and revelation from the word and also by prayer. One day my wife shared a vision that she she had with me concerning the righteousness of the believer. And she said she saw a picture of a man dressed in white and they will, they will stain it. The man will stain the dress intentionally and all of a sudden an angel of the Lord will come and scrub the garment clean and it stays white. And that was because the person was still pursuing Jesus Christ. But you see, it's hard... For, how many times do you go to church and they, they ask us to do opening prayer? And the, 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 it is guaranteed that this is the format. We are going to thank God. After thanking God, we are going to ask for forgiveness of sins. Is it not possible that we can gather in God and know there is none in our midst that has sinned? Is it such a strange thing? <clears throat> is it such a strange thing to happen? So you see, you need to be convinced about your holiness. You need to be totally persuaded about your righteousness. That is the exercise toward godliness. You see, when we read Ephesians chapter 4, when we read verses 23 to 24, it tells us that the new man that we are we have put on was created by God in Christ Jesus, and that new man is the Bible says, and I quote, truly righteous and holy. But every time you go somewhere, you're going to hear something that somebody is going to tell you that if you want to be holy. You don't have to fornicate. You don't have to lie. You don't have to steal. But you have been doing it. You have been doing everything in your power not to lie, but you lie. Not to fornicate, but you fornicate. Not to steal, but you steal. Not to be bitter, but you are bitter. Do you know why? Because holiness and and, and godliness is not attained by doing. It is attained by, by a revelation in the word. So when we become disciplined in the word, we become disciplined in prayer, it brings us to the place to be able to walk in the godliness that God has given to us as a gift. To walk in the righteousness that God has given to us as a gift. I am holy. If I stand there and I say this, some people will argue with me, there is nobody holy, only God is holy. But I am holy. I am because that's what the word says. So we have to learn. And you see, it's about embracing. The discipline is about living in that mindset. Now, um, if if I want to go uh, line by line, let, let me just move straight to verse 12. Verse 12 says this. Let no one despise your youth. You have to discipline yourself so that even if you are young, we will trust in your wisdom. 
We will trust in your knowledge. We will trust in your recommendations. We will trust in your judgments. I will come to that. Be an example to believers. You have to train yourself to be an example. Some of you, you are not an example. When we come to your home, you are not an example. When you come to your, your workplace, you are not an example. When we come to your community, you are not an example. When we come into the church, you are not an example. You are not an example in the way you speak because it says in word, in conduct, in the way you do your things. Everything you do, you do it begrudgingly, with murmurs, with complaints. In love. Some of you, you don't know how to love. In spirit. Some of you, when it comes to the things of the spirit, you are not disciplined at all. Some people cannot fast. In faith and in purity. Verse 15 says that meditate on these things, give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. King James will say that, that your profiting will appear to everybody. Now, let me use this few minutes to just make my point. Why do we need systems? This is why we need systems. This is why you need to live a predictable life. Why are you, in which areas are you trying to be predictable? You are trying to be predictable in the way you talk. If anything happens and they say, let's call, let's call Mimi, let's call Adrina, let's call Francis, let's call Irajwa. The, 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 the number one conclusion that is that after this one, when she comes or when he comes, this is what he or she will say. And when you come, it is exactly what you will say. Do you know what? Because you have become disciplined in word. How are we supposed to? So I'm going to offer us an approach to creating systems, right? I believe that the creation of systems first starts with the mindset. The creation of a system starts with a mindset. Now, let's, let's take it slowly. On Sunday, I preached a message in church, and I'm going to use that as an example, to try and help us to create the system and the discipline to journey upwards and to live the uncommon life. The first thing, the first mindset that we have to develop is that we are the temple of God. We are the temple of God. God dwells in you. The Father dwells in you. The Son dwells in you. The Spirit dwells in you. Why am I saying this? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 and 19 tells me so. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 tells me that whoever is joined to the Lord has become one spirit with the Lord. So when I become born again, what has happened to me is that I have become one spirit with the Lord. Now, if I become one spirit with the Lord, verse 19 says that my body is no longer mine. My body now has become the residence of the Holy Spirit. So, that is the first approach. My body is the temple of God. God dwells there. Literally, see it like literally God dwells here. The second way after you've come to appreciate this thought is that you are made for glory. You are made for glory. You are made for honor. You are made for blessing. You are made for prosperity. You are made for power. Why am I saying so? Because the God that has come to dwell in you and I, he is the creator of, all the, of everything in the universe. He is called the king of glory. Psalm 24 calls him the king of glory. Lift up your heads, O you gate. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Let the king of glory come in. So if I've given my life to Christ and the king of glory has come in, 
the creator of the universe, what is happening to me is that literally glory has come to abide in me. Glory is resident in me. Whatever he is, whatever surrounds him is what now surrounds me. Please, am I making sense? For instance, if the president of Ghana decides that from today, your house is my residence, will you think about arm robbers again? Will you think about what to eat again? Will you think about what to wear again? No, it, it automatically becomes the responsibility of the kingdom to take care of you. So now that I am, I understand now that I am, I understand that I am made for glory. The next line that I, 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 I live with is the mindset of these two principles, the mindset of the believer. Now that I know that I am one spirit with the Lord, now that I know that the Lord lives in me and I am made for glory and I don't have to think about anything that the, that the people, the profane people think about. What is the mindset that I live with? Then that one, we go to John chapter 14, verse 10, starting from verse 10. In verse 9, the disciple asked, Jesus, show us the Father. Jesus says that, have I been with you in verse 10? Have I been with you this long? And you are still asking me to show you the Father. Why? He says then, he continues to say that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. So you see that Jesus, this is how Jesus lived, literally. This was his discipline. Teaching his mind to live in this realm. The Father is in me. I am in the Father. I am one spirit with the Father. To the extent that he, he says that he says that the words that I speak, I do not say on my own. It is the Father that speaks through me. So now remember, it is the Father that speaks through you. Now, if it is the Father that speaks through you, if you are a human being and you stand before God and God says that, what will happen to you? If you are a human being and you stand before God and God says, be mad, what will happen to you? Because then Jesus is saying that the, I am the temple, the Father lives in me. Now I know I am made for glory, I am made for honor, I am made for beauty, I am made for rejoicing, I am made for all these things. To the extent that now, because I do not belong to myself, in fact, if we have read First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, it's going to tell us that we don't belong to ourselves anymore. And because I don't belong to myself, now the Father has taken possession of this body. So he speaks through me. So if God is speaking, what kind of words does God speak? Then he says that because the words that I speak, they are not my own, but it is the Father that speaks through me. He does works. The words of the Father produces works. The words of the Father produces works. So he says that, so if you don't believe that the Father is in me and I am in the Father, look at the works. So you read the Bible and the Bible says that, Jesus says that the work that I do, you will do more than I do. And you look at your life and you have not done anything that Jesus has done. It is because we are not living according to this discipline and this system. The discipline is the discipline of believing according to the Bible. You know, there are so many things that are, are, are so, in, so many interesting things that has happened in my life that I really see that God is with me. Sometimes my wife will come and make some recommendations about things we should do. Like for instance, one day I was there, my wife said that, why are we paying our tithes separate? Because when we read the Bible, there's nowhere in the Bible that you will see that any family paid their tithes separately. They brought it together. And I said, wow, it's true. Let's do it. So you see, 
the discipline is that you have to train your mind to think according to that which is written in the bible the reason why you do things must be because the bible says so and you are supposed to train your hands train your mind train your thought train your imaginations to think like the bible then the system that you create is that you come to a place where you realize that because you are the temple of god you are made for you see i am made for glory i am made for honor because god is a glorious god in fact anywhere the throne of god appeared in the bible the bible said that the glory of god was there ezekiel chapter 1 ezekiel chapter 10 revelation chapter 5 everywhere the throne of god appeared when we look at exodus everywhere we see the throne we see the cherubim and where we see the cherubim we see the glory of god wherever we see the living creatures we see the glory of god i am never alone why because wherever god is there are thousands and thousands of angels there so why is it that they have left you in the house and you cannot sleep in the room alone because you are afraid of demons it means that you are not you are not thinking like the bible system you are not you are not disciplining your heart and your mind to reason according to the bible because if you are truly convinced that god is living in you you won't necessarily believe that there are thousands of angels watching over you because what you are is god's house even if akufado has bodyguards how much more god so we train ourselves and discipline ourselves to live a regimented life based on the things that are written then you see that when you pray your prayer is prayer made according to the will of god because now you know that you are made for glory so even when you yesterday i was sharing a funny story the bible says that at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang they worshiped god an earthquake came shook the prison every door in the prison was open the, the jailer was about to kill himself and paul and silas said and don't kill yourself we have not run away we have made sure that every other prisoner too did not run away and the bible says that that action it led to the salvation of the the, the entire household of the jailer you and i if we are in the prison and we pray to god and god sends an earthquake and the prison door opens what will you do <laughs> So you see, when we discipline ourselves to think according to the principles of the Bible, according to the reasoning of the Bible, you will realize that the journey upwards will become easier. It will become more enjoyable. Embracing the uncommon life will be more enjoyable it will be easier a lot of us are struggling to pray because we have not developed the godly mindset a lot of us are struggling to live for god a lot of virgins are eager to give up their virginity because the world, the profane people are laughing at them. And you, you cannot even see the honor that God is giving you by asking you to keep yourself. But you see, when you begin to reason out of the word, it will make sense. So your decision or your resolve, it will be unflinching. Beloved, the reason why we pray every day is because of the mindset and that is what i talked about that under systems we consider belief system what do you believe value system what do you value then your approach or your perspective on life why are you going through the things you are going through how do you explain it 
what is your belief system do you believe that god can give you your healing do you believe that god can make a way where there's no way or we just laugh saying it no it has to be something that is real to us if it is going to be real to us like for instance how can you and i as young people without in quote experience in god perform miracles it can only come from our mindset if you believe that god lives in you and if you are truly convinced that god speaks through you that the words that you speak they are not your words but it is the it is god speaking through you do you think you cannot produce miracles when you stand before anybody that is sick you you will confidently tell the person that you are healed the person will ask you what is the reason of your confidence you will tell me because god lives in me and god is the one speaking through me it is the mindset it is the mindset so i train my mind to think like jesus was thinking and in john's gospel chapter 14 he literally tells us how jesus was thinking why was he getting up every morning mark 135 says that he will get up early in the morning to go and pray in the mountains why was jesus doing that it's because of his mindset he knew he had to commune with his father you see the reason why you spend more time on facebook on instagram or on something else watching television shows more than you spend in the bible is because you are not convinced that you will learn something from the bible you don't believe that you will get entertainment from the bible you don't believe that you will get wisdom from the bible the only time you read your bible is when you want god to show you mercy when things are too tough but if you and i will discipline ourselves and go to the bible every time we read the bible remember he has made us stewards of mysteries anytime you read your bible you should be willing and eager and expectant ready to see something you have never seen before he said that and call to me and i'll answer and i'll show you great and mighty things you know nothing about that you can see something scientific you can see something nutritional you can see something god will give you a revelation that can why did daniel decide not to eat the food offered to idols it's because of mindset it's because he was reasoning through the things he had read from the bible why do you believe the things you believe it has to be based on things you have read from the bible why do you approach situations or events the way you do it has to be because of some a, a logical approach you have been able to discern out of the bible the discipline now the last thing i want to say is that discipline the, the other one is says that give attention to reading 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 studying reading now this is the last thing i want to say before we bring today's session to a close discipline is difficult but if you do it consistently and you find your steady state you'll be very 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 fruitful that's what he says and he promises that our profiting will appear to all some of us on saturdays after after our house chores we do nothing why don't you determine to sit there with the bible and study the word for one hour with your notebook and your pen some people say i don't know how to preach you don't know how to preach because you are not studying the bible because you are not praying some people say i don't know how to evangelize it's because you don't know how to read your bible you don't know how to pray let us from today give ourselves a target that in the seven days of the week when we put the total hours of the week together at least we we are we want to be gracious we want to be able to spend at least 
six hours with the Bible. Just six hours. That's all I am asking for, for the entire week. Maybe Monday you are a very busy person. When you wake up, you have to do pa 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 pa. But I want you to promise yourself that anytime you open your Instagram to check if somebody has posted something foolish, you read your Bible to gain wisdom. Anytime you open your Facebook to watch something profane, just when after you close your, if you spend what, three hours watching short videos, watching series on Facebook, why can't you spend one hour reading your Bible? Some people say it's not interesting. It's not interesting because you don't want it to be interesting. Let us become disciplined. Greek is good. Hebrew is good. But I want you and I to become like our fathers and our mothers. The ones that wake up at 4 a.m. just so they can read the Bible to 5 a.m. and they can pray to 6 a.m. before they leave for work. Some of, you, some of you, you are 19, you are 20, you are 21. You sleep 12 hours a day. Some people, you sleep eight hours a day. And you say that, oh, that's what is recommended. That's what the scientists say. Eight hours. Hey. And yet you say that God does not speak to you. You wonder how the gift of God is not working in you. You have to be disciplined. He said, I'll be disciplined. When you read 1 Corinthians 4, he said that, let the gift that you have received, put it to work. When you read, the Bible says that those who, by reason of use, have learned to discern good from evil. Discipline. I prophesy. We have given you an opportunity to prophesy. When we call people... People don't want to prophesy. So they will even comment so that you know that they are there. <laughs> Discipline. We, 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 we are trying to let you know that the things that we are doing, it, it is not exclusive. It is for all of us. It is for all of us. It must be you and I, our experience that when we step out there, the people of the world will know that they are profane and we are holy. But you, when you stand there, the kind of things that come out of your mouth, the mouth that you say that it is God that is speaking through you, are you sure God can say those things? People of God. If we are going to journey upwards, if we are going to embrace the uncommon life, if we are going to become stewards of mysteries, it is very necessary for us to become disciplined according to the systems that God is giving us in his word. If you are a woman here, let me say this. If you are a woman here, and you call your, your husband your partner. He is my partner. The Bible says we are equal. Go and read your Bible. Don't define your life according to the standards of the world, the wisdom of the world. You will get problems. A lot of young marriages are collapsing because they have used the philosophies of the world to, uh, to define what their marriage is. Your relationships. Everything must be done in light of scripture. Please read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. It is important that you read your Bible. That, that comment you are, you are passing when you heard that somebody is... A woman's right activist was saying something. That, that, yeah, 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 it's true. Go and read your Bible. If, yeah, 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 it's really true. 
we have equal share. Yes, we do have equal share. There is neither male or female in God. But there is always a head. If there is a head, there is always a body. Maybe you are the body. But you don't want to be the body. You want to be the head. We have to make decisions together. Let me ask you, how many times does Jesus consult you before he tells you to do something? Think about it. Think about it. Sometimes Jesus will come and reason with you. But ask yourself, how many times that Jesus comes and says that, let's think about this. Uh, I, I want you to go to Senegal to go and evangelize. What do you think? <laughs> is, that what, is that how he does it? Why am I using this example? I'm using this example because it clearly tells us that there are many of us, the way we see life, it is not from the biblical perspective. It's not from the Bible perspective. Our opinions, our value systems, our beliefs, they are all shaped by television. Let me ask you another question. For those that watch telenovelas, have you realized that most of the telenovelas, they create bizarre circumstances? Somebody is sleeping with somebody's wife. Somebody's wife is sleeping with somebody's husband. Somebody's husband is sleeping with somebody's ex. But have you realized that you really enjoy all those things? Have you asked yourself why? Why you like it so much? E, and, and I don't know their names, so forgive me. So I'm going to make up some of the names. You see how Anas was kissing a, a, a Peter, a, a, and Peter's wife was just watching and crying. Oh, I feel sad. Oh, but you see, Anas really likes Peter. Do you know why you feel like it is okay? It's because you are not reading your Bible. The reason why when you are watching some things or when you hear some things that in the sight of God are evil and you feel so comfortable is because you are not reading your Bible. The last time my wife said to me that I am becoming like an Old Testament person. <laughs> I am a child of the new covenant. So I am a new creation activist. I believe in new creation realities. But do you know what? We are young people. And that's why we are journeying upwards. You want your marriage to succeed. You want to be exemplary in the workplace. You want to be excellent in your educational field. You want to be, you want to be excellent in everything. It's going to take discipline and new building systems. And key to these systems is the study of the word. Prayer and fasting. Because out of these three, all the rest will follow. Whether you do evangelism, whether you cast out demons, whether you pray for the sick, it is all going to come from the fact that you are studying the word, you are fasting and you are praying. And that is why the apostle said, and as for us, we will give ourselves to prayer and fasting. Force yourself to pray. If you pray and you sleep, when you wake up, continue to pray. Pray till you have you pray and you can't sleep again. And I know that the Lord will continue to bless us. God, so God bless, bless you for listening. Maranatha, the Lord comes.